Hello, everybody. This is Tom Eckert here. You're listening to my podcast, Numerology, a GPS for the soul. This is your place to learn about the true power of numerology and how to use it to bring out the best in yourself, understand your loved ones better, take wise decisions, and prepare for your future. In other words, how to live your life aligned with your true destiny. Take your time to educate yourself and share these podcasts with your friends and family so they too can enjoy the great benefits of numerology. Enjoy! Hello everybody and welcome to this episode. I'm so excited to share with you this unique episode about the life paths in numerology. Everybody goes around and says um, very often when they're interested in numerology, I'm a number seven or I'm a three, I'm a nine, I'm a five. People like to declare their major number. And although we're not comprised only uh, of one major or core number, but of many other numbers, the life path is nevertheless the most central number in our chart. <clears throat> so let's look into the life path number today. We're going to look into the meaning of the life path in general as a calculation, as a location in the chart. I'm going to explain the, the big advantages and the challenges of the life path, what the life path really is and what it means about you. And then I'm going to explain all the nine different life paths I will also include master numbers in the end. So uh, stay with me and let's dive into this. So the life path is first of all the most influential number in your five core numbers. It's derived from your date of birth, reduced to a single digit. So you connect all the numbers together, your day, your month, and your year of birth, and reduce all the numbers and the digit to a single digit. And then and the single digit you, you get in the end is your life path number. So it can be any number between 1 to 9. Some of you will have an 11, a 22, or a 33, which are called master numbers. And these comprise your major most central location in the five core calculations. So what's the meaning of the life path? What is it actually? First and foremost, the life path is the most central lesson that your soul chose to embody in this specific and particular lifetime. On the soul journey, we move through uh, many, many lessons. It's like a school. And the soul learns different qualities. And in every lifetime, the soul has uh, a specific curriculum, one can say. And the heart, the, the, the heart of that curriculum in this lifetime, we can call the life path. It's like the most central quality, the most central lesson that the soul needs to master or wants to master, wants to dig deeper into wants to accomplish a higher degree in understanding. So, in a sense, we can say that the life path number is a given, which means we come with it at birth. So it's a specific lens through which we perceive life, a specific energetic structure that defines who we are on a very deep level. But at the same time, we need to develop it. It's a path of evolution, which means that even if you're a number seven life path, it doesn't mean that you're simply born wise. It might mean that you have a potential for wisdom and depth. Nevertheless, you're still going to have to work a lot in order to hone on your depth, your wisdom, your intuition, your capacity for inner silence. Same goes for number three as another example. 
you are born on the one hand with the lightness, with the ease, with the expressive capacity and the playfulness of number three, but at the same time, you will have to work through in order to hone on and refine these same qualities. So with, with every given life path, it's important to understand that you will always experience both the light and the shadow. This is part of a complete learning. You can't only have the positive sides because then you don't have the complete lesson. You haven't completed the entire curriculum. So you have to also see the shadow sides, right? So every life path will move between those polarities of shadow and light and everything that's in between in order to find <clears throat> the right balance. And lastly, before we jump right into the life paths themselves, I will say this. The life path is the central axis of your life. That means that all the other numbers in your chart are secondary to the life path. Your job is to make sure that the life path is well addressed and that it's not being suppressed and that it's not being suppressed, especially on behalf of other qualities in your chart. So, for example, you're not living out other qualities on behalf of your life path, that it's not compromised. You want to make sure that you're using the other numbers in your chart as vessels to express your life path. In that sense, it's a central axis around which everything else revolves. Make sure to take care of your life path, especially in times of depression or anxiety or crisis. Try to check where am I in relation to my life path. And then make sure that you're rooting yourself back in it. Okay, so now that we've given this introduction, now that you know you have a picture of the life path, we will dive into the different numbers from 1 to 9. But before I do that, I'm reminded of one thing that I should add here. The life path also shows you your deepest, most fundamental temperament, emotional temperament, and the way you experience this life, right? So for example, I'll give one more example. If I'm a number two, I will my deepest temperament will be that of constantly relating. I will, I will always be in a very open and sensitive state of being. Okay, that's my emotional temperament. I will always be sensitive, open, vulnerable, and wanting relationships. If I'm a number four, my emotional temperament will be more, um, you can say minimalistic. Very, I'm a very practical and pragmatic kind of emotional nature. I don't show much emotions. I show emotions through deeds and actions. These are just two examples to give you the feeling of it. I just felt that without saying that, I'm not giving you the complete picture of what a life path really is. Of course, we can talk about it much more in length, but perhaps in other episodes. So let's jump right into life path number one. So if you have life path number one, your major lesson in this lifetime is to hone on and develop your individuality, your sense of independence, willpower, decisiveness, and leadership. It's a call to really learn what it means to to be a trailblazer, to be original, to, to be the one who initiates things, right? To be the one who's in the top. The top also means that I'm the one who jumps first. There's nobody before me. What does it mean to be that person? What does it meet, mean to take that initiative in one's life? You see, life path number one's calling us to learn self-authority, autonomy relying on your inner resources. So life path number one is, we can say, is a masculine energy life path. Masculine doesn't mean that women don't share it. As a matter of fact, we all share this equally. 
So whatever gender you have, that doesn't really matter. You're simply learning the lesson of leadership, of standing alone, being a light unto yourself. Number ones will, will learn what it means to, to stand out and to be able to accomplish things by themselves. To walk alone and to trust their own gut feelings. They learn to develop a razor sharp, decisive capacity. They um, are called to, to, to invent. Okay, and inventing doesn't always mean you have to invent some great thing that is going to change humanity, but it also means that you have to invent your own daily actions and decisions. It's really relying on your own originality in the way that you lead your life. You see, number ones, they have to be the leaders of their life. Number ones are not followers. They have to learn what it means that I lead my life. Others don't tell me how to do it. And that's very central for life path number one. <clears throat> they are there to hone their willpower, to pierce through limitations. You see, number one is like that energy, that the, the something that pierces out of the nothing. Right? So they 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 stand tall and bright and they can influence others, and they also want to influence others. A good example for a life path number one was Osho, for example, the famous spiritual teacher, rebellious, always very much um, um, promoting individualism. That's life path number one. So as we move Onwards, we move into life path number two. If you're a life path number two, your main focus, your main lesson in this lifetime, what your soul chose to embody and learn is a deep sensitivity and openness. It's almost as if you chose to wear a very thin skin on your body. So, so thin that everything can enter you. Everything can penetrate and touch you. You can feel the different emotions and energies around you and within you. You're so perceptive and you're, you're there to develop perceptiveness, gentleness, listening, containing others, seeing always the two sides of the coin. You see, number two, is meant to learn what it means to really bond, to relate, to open up to the energetic exchange of the heart, right? We're not one anymore, we are two now. And when the moment we are two, there's always an exchange. Me and you, you and me. The two wants to see and to be seen, to feel and to be felt. So in many ways, the two is a lesson of the heart, the lesson of kindness, of compassion, of gentleness, of vulnerability. Vulnerability is a key word for number two, part of what we're supposed to learn. We're supposed to learn here the feminine aspect. Whether we're men or women doesn't matter, as I already mentioned before. It's a lesson the soul chose to learn. And so number, number two will actually, as opposed to number one, need to learn to work in a team, in cooperation, accepting other opinions than its own. It'll perhaps need to even consult others before making a decision. This is not a mistake. Although it can cause sometimes trouble making decisions, in its nature, it's not a mistake. It's because two is about cooperation. It's about becoming more than only me. And because of this energetic structure, it might feel a little harder to make a decision sometimes. Another thing I would like to add about number two is that there's also 
the wish on the soul level to develop a, a, a kind of um, subtle perception, or we can say intuition. So it's connecting to this intuitive dimension of life, uh, a deep perception of the subtle layers, the subtle energetics of life. So there's also um, a spiritual touch, we can say, to number two. There, there often is a kind of attraction to, to what's beyond the physical because there is the connection to the subtle in number two. So that's kind of what our soul has come to embody with number two. So we're moving on to life path number three. Life path number three is meant to learn the lesson of emotional expression playfulness, and creativity. So when you are a life path number three, you are here to learn to really bring out the full spectrum of your emotions out there in a creative way. It's like, imagine like a child full of color, like with a rainbow of colors, feeling all the emotions of life, very open to the impressions of life very curious, very open, wanting to simply share it with everyone. It's not really a sharing with a goal, okay? But rather sharing for the sake of sharing itself. There is a deep joy in being able to express emotions. And that's what three is here for. Three is here to really voice the different emotions. It is here to express creativity for the sake of creativity itself, for the joy of it, because life is a celebration of creativity. So three is like this bubbling energy of joy, of simplicity, of a childlike essence, a child that wants to really laugh and express the full spectrum of emotion that it, that a child can experience. So Number three is here to embody the child, the child archetype, which makes them very colorful beings. And in many ways, they want to preserve this quality throughout their life. And you see life, if you think about it for a moment, invites a lot of challenges. So when you think about the part that I've said earlier that the life path is something we also need to develop. Imagine that a three will also need to maintain their natural innocence in the face of the challenges of life. And this is how you can see also our own hard work in actually evolving and refining our life paths. Right? So number three needs to develop and, 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 and keep and, and refine the quality of simplicity of, of being in the now, really enjoying the beauty of the now, the, the, the simple things of life, the sunshine, the birds, the sky, the laughter, spending time with friends. Threes really need to learn not to suppress emotions and not to allow stronger forces or people in their life to turn off their natural joy and wish for full expression and full creative expression. Wonderful. So we, pers we proceed now and we move on to life path number four. Life path number four is, is, it moves around the lesson or deals with the central lesson of stability and groundedness. So it's a lot about, imagine like this very solid root chakra, having solid roots, being deeply earthed, being solid, being stable. It's about stability. Number four is about learning what it means to find stability in life, find order in life, appreciate the, the um, significance, the sacred significance of structure. Structure, you see, has a sacredness to it. Without structure, you can't create anything, you can't build anything for the long run. If you only have ideas, 
but you don't have structure, the ideas simply evaporate. No matter how deep or how much light you can receive from the divine without a structure, a vessel, to receive that light, that light simply uh, dissipates. So for everything valuable, you need a structure. Even freedom, complete freedom and liberation can only be realized in a healthy functioning body and psyche. Structure is sacred. And that's part of the lesson of number four, learning the, the value of structure of solidity and that can express itself for example in having solid routines self-discipline developing a healthy body taking care of one's finances taking care of the future making sure that i can have a solid home and house and maintain and provide for my family to be a rock that others can lean on to learn loyalty and reliability so you see number four has a different tone than number three, right? Before it was like the child, and now we moved into the, the adult. And the adult has to take responsibility. And number four is about taking responsibility and fully backing it up. It's promising something and, and making sure it happens. Being a woman and a man of your word. That's four, right? It's it's this very trustworthy energy. I say what I do. I walk my talk. I'm practical. I'm pragmatic. These are, the, these are the qualities I'm here to develop and hone on. So as a number four life path, you want to make sure that you respect your need for consistency, for long-term planning, for stability. Perhaps you even love tradition. Yeah, many people with number four, they love ancient wisdom they love respect they love to respect ancestry they love the respect to their land okay there's an appreciation of of earth of the ground of this soil of hard earned achievements that's the beauty of number four something that is built step by step and then becomes solid and fully stable <clears throat> and on we go in our journey of the life path to life path number five. So this is a very intense shift from number four. Life path number five revolves around the lesson of freedom and change, adventure, being experimental, improvisation. So number five is a very dynamic life path. In a sense, we can say that having a life path number five means I'm here to explore. I'm here to taste life with my own senses, with my own body. I want to know how things feel firsthand. I don't want to hear it from other people. I want to take risks. I want to try out. I want to have adventures. I want to literally eat and devour this life. I want to know it through my own senses, through my own eyes and body and hands and everything. So five is very experimental. With the life path five, you need to be very flexible and adaptable to different surroundings and people and situations. It's almost like you're meant to mingle. You're meant to communicate a lot. You see in fives, as, an, as another added element to their major lesson, we have also communication. Fives are amazing communicators. When they function in their strength, very often you'll see them being able to communicate with every person completely in their own language. That's so beautiful and impressive. It's, it's almost like they simply blend with the person and they don't put themselves above or below. They simply blend with the person. They can be of different culture. They can be of different whatever, different age, right? But they will adapt. And this is something that makes fives really adorable very often because they, they can, you can just put them on in, in any, like in, a, in an island with unknown people and they will simply sniff around, kind of get the rules of the game pretty quickly and blend with the people around them. They're very spontaneous. They're very people loving, super social. So you see the life path number five is really here to, to learn this, unbounded flexibility, 
adapt, uh, adaptivity to change. So life is a constant movement, which is really um, represented by the quality, the energetic quality of five. And five life path wants to learn how to adapt to changes, change in circumstances, change in jobs, change in partners, change in ideas. Right, so I want to become this as a number five. I want to become a very flexible being. I want to understand also what is the meaning of freedom. Am I free when I'm fulfilling all my desires, or maybe at some point fulfilling desires becomes a barrier? So the question arises for a number fives always: What is freedom? What really is freedom? And this is the question that the soul of number five. Life path has come here to ask and to discover experientially. We're moving on to life path number six. Life path number six revolves around the lesson of the heart. It's about being a very mature heart. Becoming a heart that cares for others. Expanding our heart to really take care of our family, of our friends, of our community. It's all about opening the heart to true love and exchange. It's about taking under our wings, not only ourselves or our most close friends, but also other people. Extending ourselves, for example, to the community. Number six is about maturity. If you think about it, number three was the child. And if you double number three, it becomes six. So the child, when it expressed itself in number three as like the childlike emotional expression, in number three, it wants to express the adult emotional expression, which has a, a much more responsible, ripe range of emotions. So the number six life path wants to create deep, lasting bonds with people that have a sense of mutual exchange. It's a give and receive, a give and receive. They want to really be deeply involved in people's lives. They want to contribute and they truly want to give. There's a lot of goodness and, and warmth of heart in number six. There's a compassion, there's a care. So very often, number six life paths will be also attracted to be um, either in the therapeutic fields or sometimes in the artistic fields. Because again, there's a lot of creativity, right? It's like number three just doubled. So number six is a creativity that longs to become an art, a beauty. Because six life path is also about Discovering the deep meaning of aesthetics and beauty. Also emotional beauty. Six is all about emotional maturity. So they will be faced with a lot of emotions and a lot of situations of like interpersonal situations being sometimes insulted or sometimes wanting something and not saying it or taking care of others and, and having responsibilities to take for other people, being called to give. It's all kinds of situations which will demand of them to deal with human emotion, anger, disappointment, love, care, you know, um, etc. And finding harmony in all of that. Finding, making their, their emotions harmonious. So they are here to give, they are here to love, they are here to take others under their wing and support them and nourish them. Six is really a number that is here to nourish and give. It's, it's a lot about support. It's a very motherly energy in a way, and even beyond motherly, it's parental. Six is here to learn what it means to be really a parent. It doesn't necessarily mean they need to become a physical parent biological parent but energetically as an archetype they want to learn what it means to become a parent a loving caring nurturing parent and now let us move on to life path number seven 
Life path number seven is all about wisdom, depth, and seeing beyond the surface of things. Life path number seven is here to reach to reach the 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 deeper most layers of their being to discover layer by layer the deep and deeper layers of their being to look at the mysteries of life and ask the big questions that occupy the subconscious of all of humanity but not everyone is willing to ask them why are we here who am i what is the purpose of life what is the meaning of life what is my highest destiny what is the origin of reality what is reality all these deep fundamental questions occupy the mind and heart of life path number seven in many ways we can say that they are here to discover essential wisdom they are here to find or at least attempt to find answers to the deepest questions of life they can do it in different forms they can do it by being a scientist exploring the mysteries of life for example through physics they can be a mystic exploring it through um, spiritual practices right esoteric knowledge occultists seers <clears throat> they can also be philosophers so people who contemplate a lot about life and try to look at the most subtle and refined layers of this existence in the foundation in the in the in the very root of the lesson of life path number seven they want to discover the truth they are after the truth so in many ways the seven life path is the truth seeker and it doesn't really matter what is their channel you see i'm not saying in any way that science is better than spirituality or spirituality is better than science whatever works for you as a seven life path is wonderful as long as you're truly you're, you're really true to your life path you're actually making sure that you're there to discover the deeper wisdom the deeper truth of this existence another part of that major lesson is relying on your inner wisdom you see sevens are here to become their own self authorities in terms of relying deeply and fully on their inner knowing in the end their exploration is supposed to gradually and progressively make them more able to see the truth clearly and directly for themselves so they become a light unto themselves and in this way they can become potentially very um, beneficial and very um, wise guides for other people to discover the same things in themselves and now we move on to life path number eight life path number eight revolves around the lesson of power ambition being able to execute my wishes and make them manifest it's about manifestation the power to execute using my willpower my assert my assertiveness and bring an idea into full materialization so eight is a lot about exploring my own personal power eight life path is 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 coming with a lot of passion a form of electricity even they're very ambition ambitious they're very achievement oriented and uh they're survivors by nature so life path eight will learn it's like the soul really wants to learn what it means to grow through friction and through the friction to discover my power assert my power and show myself that i'm simply capable it's a lesson of breakthroughs like i i show myself i can break through challenges right so life path eight wants to discover their real power the power of overcoming the power of winning and having victories in life being able to pierce through and and end up victorious 
For example, I start as a simple worker in a, in a company and I make efforts, I assert myself, I show my abilities, I fight hard to get to the top and I one day become the CEO of the same company I started as a simple customer service representative. So you see the eight aspires to reach the top. They want to feel what it feels like to stand in the top. <clears throat> They're here to discover what it means to be wealthy, to have a strong body, to have a vibrant body, to feel their strength, right? And, and, and so they want to feel their strength both physically, but also on the level of, um, of influence, of, of, of self-esteem and, and literally wealth and power, the ability to, to command, to influence. So number eight, um, as you can imagine, like I said in the beginning, nothing comes as a complete given. They will definitely have part of that strength, but they will also, throughout their life, will need to meet different energies, sometimes even energies that will try to belittle them, because they need to prove to themselves that they can come out victorious. And that's the amazing thing about life path number eight. On we go into life path number nine. So life path number nine is revolving around the lesson of universality. What does it mean? to become universal, to have a universal heart, to be open to this existence, to humanity beyond my personal self, not to be focused on myself anymore, to be focused for the benefit of all, to be here for the benefit of all, to have a large, wide open heart, a generous heart that is there for the sake of all of humanity. It's about starting to really think beyond the personal. It has a lot to do with a love without boundaries, with a giving without boundaries, with an openness that has no boundaries. Nine, life path is about limitlessness, losing the boundaries. So nine life paths are here to discover um, what it means to be really liberal to be completely open-minded, to be open to all the colors and genders and cultures and, 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 and different opinions. It's, it's about pluralism. Nine is open in all directions. And that's, in a way, what they're really supposed to embody. Okay? Again, nobody comes completely and utterly open like that. They have that as, as a beginning point and they have to bring it into full flowering. So they are, they, they are here to discover what real generosity is, what real compassion is, what it means to dedicate oneself to something that is really bigger than only myself. It can be a, 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 um, a great ideal. For example, service to the poor or to the old or to develop human consciousness to, to its next level and help people, guide people. Martin Luther King, for example, he didn't have nine in his life path but he had it in a very central location in his chart. And you can see that there was a strong, strong idealistic nature there. So I'm just, you know who had nine? Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi. Now it comes to my mind. Mahatma Gandhi had a nine. See what a beautiful example it is for number nine life path. Gandhi simply sacrificed his own life as an example of what an idealistic life can be like. You see, and that's the power that life path number nine has come here to live. They are here to learn the lesson of what it means to be a leader by example. I become what I want to demonstrate for the sake of the masses, for the sake of the entire world, all of humanity. So I want to show everyone through my living example what it means to be the ideal that I'm standing for. Ideally, this should be, of course, some enlightened idea, right? Freedom, love, generosity, togetherness, oneness, unity, and so on and so forth. Nine is here to learn giving without expecting anything in return. So now 
I've covered, after I've covered all the life paths from one to nine, I'm going to say just a few words about the master number life paths. I'm not going to enter them deeply because they are a subject in and of themselves, but still because some of us will have master number life paths, I owe you a few words about them as well. So master number life paths, they have a kind of unique nature. On the one hand, we can say that a master number life path means that on the soul level, you have a deep yearning to serve humanity on some kind of universal level. It's a little bit like number nine, but that applies to all the master numbers. So they're here to do something on a mass level, or at least that's the ambition of the soul. Okay, there's like a wish to bring into this world something from the spiritual dimensions, we can say. Ultimately, when a master number life path functions well, and the person knows how to embody the life path, then they become like a, like a very smooth, well-flowing channel, almost like a waterfall of inspiration coming from the spiritual dimensions um, and bringing into this life a lot of positive inspiration, a lot of um, out-of-the-box inspiration. Now, this can be, don't, don't get me wrong, it doesn't have to be like channelings from some kind of other beings. I'm talking about, for example, Robin Williams had master numbers. Um, Barack Obama had a master, has a master number um, life path. So there, there are people, they can become brilliant in their field. They can leave some something of eternal value for humanity, or let's say more eternal, more, more lasting and significant. However, it's important to understand that the master numbers function on two frequencies. They function on the double digit master number quality, but they also function on the, the single digit energetic frequency. So if you have an 11 master number, you also have an, a life number two, and you must understand what a life number two uh, uh, means. If you have a number, a master number 22, you have to for sure know what a life path four means. Nobody can function on the master number frequency all the time. So it's always like a, a, a movement between the single digit to the double digit part of the master number from the 11 to the two, from the 22 to the four, from the 33 to the six. And very shortly, I will say this. The 11 life path is here to become um, a very sensitive vessel that really wants to expose the truth of things. They're like a very receptive receptacle, okay? Like a, a kind of a, a vessel that becomes super highly sensitive for the higher vibrations, the higher light that potentially can expose all the little alleys in corners of our being that are still hidden in the dark. And so potentially the 11 can become a very enlightening master number, full of inspiration, full of inspiration. The 22 master number life path is about manifesting a high ideal in the material world for the sake of of the benefit of all, for the benefit of all. So it's about bringing something, in a sense we can say from the future, future meaning the, the higher intelligent unmanifest world, into this world in a very concrete way, in a structure, something tangible and livable. This is why it's also a 22 with a 4, because 4 is a very practical number. And then we have... 33 life path and the 33 life path is all about universal love it's about really giving universal love without limitations it's it's really a master giver we can say okay it's here to learn universal love and universal compassion it's it's about shining for the benefit of all it's they really want to give without limitations completely without limitations to shine like a sun of warmth and love and care and sacrifice for the well-being and welfare of all. So by saying this, I covered shortly the master number life paths. So 
I'm super happy that you listened so far. If you've reached so far, we've covered all the life paths and I encourage you to learn your own life path well. Because as I said in the beginning, this is the central axis around which your entire chart revolves, your entire life. It's the central energetic quality you're here to learn. Make sure to hone on it. Make sure to learn it. Make sure to give it space and time. Never say there's no time or I don't have enough time or so on. These are all excuses. You, It's like your, your daily bread. You must be connected to your life path and you will find deeper happiness in it. Okay, my friends, thank you so much again for listening and I'll see you in the next episodes. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you did and you want to go deeper into numerology, check out my website, tom-eckert.com. You can also book a numerology reading or even study numerology yourself through my courses. I'll see you in the next episode.